Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my regular expressions tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to use regular expressions inside of the programming language called Python. So what I'm going to do is I have a text file over here that just has a bunch of random nonsense, and I'm going to grab that random nonsense, and I'm going to do that by using the open function, followed by the name of the file. Then I'm going to pull each line of text. There's only one, but if there were multiple lines of text, I would pull each one by one and save them to a string variable that is called str2search. So what I'm going to do is define that string right here. And then I'm going to use a for statement to pull in line for line and save it to this new string that I saved or that I created. And if this doesn't make any sense, this is the Python programming language. I have a tutorial. You should watch it first and then all this will make sense. And I'm going to add each line by line to this string variable called string to search. Now everything's going to be in there and I can prove it and run it, and it shoots out all the information that's in that file. Now let's use some regular expressions. Let's say I want to search this file for anything that matches the code that I use here and ignore case, meaning it's going to work whether the pattern is in uppercase or lowercase letters. Once real easy, I define the pattern that I'm going to look for. I'm going to call it patfinder2, and I'm going to use the compile method and I'm going to define that I want to find this guy, B3, B2, C, okay? Now, that's not going to match unless I have, you could actually put RE dot I, but I'm going to type it out the full way, the way it should be done. Okay, so I define the pattern I want to look for. Now, I have to actually search for it, and I define the pattern that I just created and the string that I want to search. And I do it just like that. And I'm going to use an if statement. Again, I'm doing a lot of this stuff just to show you things you should do. Find pat2. What I'm doing with this if statement is I'm checking to see that this pattern was found. If it wasn't, it's not going to try to print it to screen. But if it did find that pattern, it will print it to screen. Else, print nothing found okay and then if we run it doink you can see it found b3 b2c even though i just have everything in lowercase letters so that's what ignore case does for you that's a little bit boring but we'll get more interesting here in a minute let's say i wanted to search through and basically pull out every single character that wasn't a new line i would do that with a dot which is going to match everything except for a new line and then by putting the star after it, it's going to match zero to many of anything that's not a new line so it'll basically return everything. If I run that, doink, you can see it printed all that out. Now let's say I wanted to print out every single thing that was a letter. Real simple, just bracket A to Z and then close that bracket. And then since I'm searching through the whole entire thing, I need to use find all instead of search, which I used before. And then I'm gonna have to iterate through all of the different results that were available. So I'm gonna use plot find all. Everything else here is going to be exactly the same, except I'm going to iterate through it. And then print to screen everything that I found. And you can see it prints all the letters, just letters, out to screen that match and it ignores everything that is not a letter. And if I didn't want all of these to appear on different lines, I would come in here and type end is equal to, and then two quotes, and it would print all the letters out on one line. By default, this will shoot out a new line. That's the reason why everything went on one line whenever I did that. I could also search for just randomness that's in this string file, as well as zero to nine, this. And it searches through and it pulls out all the numbers and all of the different codes. You see that inside of this bracket area, I do not need to escape backslash these guys. It automatically works just right along on its own and allows me to search for all of these different things. And just to change it up and try out something new, let's say I wanted to search for a digit followed by something that was anything but a digit followed by white space followed by everything that wasn't white space, any character at all, anything that's not a character, and then followed by something that is a letter. Now we can do that just like this, boom. And it finds this very specific thing, the only thing that matches. Being a digit, something that's not a digit, followed by a space, followed by something that's not a space, 
followed by any character, followed by another thing that is not a space, followed by something that is a character. And that's basically what we were able to do right here. It was able to pull something that convoluted out of this nonsense that we have right here. Previously, I talked a lot about searching for Jennifer. So I have another file here that is just, just names, Jennifer Clark, Paul Brown, so forth, and so on. Let's say I wanted to search inside of that file. Well, I'm gonna type in names, which is the name of that text file. String to search is already defined. I'm going to pull in all that information line for line and store it in string to search. And in this situation, I'm going to search specifically for Jennifer's. And let's do it the convoluted, complicated way. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm searching for any word that begins with the first letters J-E followed by either N-N-I-F-E-R, N-N-Y, or just simply N. And here I'm saying that I expect it to find between one to six characters followed by a space, then one or more characters, then followed by another space. So that's what I'm searching for there. So it'll return Jennifer for me. Click that, and you can see it. Jumped in there, grabbed Jennifer Clark, Jenny from the block and Jen Simpson. Now I could, like I showed you in a previous tutorial, actually simplify this and put Annifer, Y, and of course I already got an N in there, and this is what you would do if you wanted to be sharp. See, it actually said, I want J and E followed by one to six characters that are either the character N-I-F-E-R-Y. And that's exactly what it does, and then it spits out the first and last names for anybody named Jennifer. And you can see it skips over Paul Brown and all these other different things. So it's sort of like a convoluted, tricky little way to grab all the Jennies and Jennifers and so forth and so on from code. Now I'm going to jump in and I'm actually going to look at something else. This is random text, and this is somebody talking about the number pi. So I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to grab, grab specifically pi from it. So the name is random text. I'm gonna leave everything else the same, except here, I'm gonna define exactly what it would mean to be pi. Well, basically, it's a digit, and then I have to escape out the dot, because in this circumstance, I actually want the dot, and I don't want it to be considered any character except new line, followed by another digit, just that simple. And then, I instead of using find all, because I'm only looking for one, I'm gonna use search in this situation, and then I'm going to use the group method. So I'm going to call print find pat two dot group. And then if I print this to screen, it'll search through all that information and print 3.14 blah 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 to screen like it did right there. So that's a way to search for a series of digits or another way to search for things. But another thing, if you look at the end of this file here, is a telephone number. Let's say I wanted to search through here and find said telephone number. Well, how I would do that, again, I want these brackets in here. And then it's going to be a number from 0 to 9. And then, since it's a telephone number, it's going to be at least three digits in length. And then that might be followed by a dash. So I'm going to, in this situation, put a question mark. That's a, you know, that's a definition that it might have a dash in it, or it might not. Now, you can make many different complicated telephone number, regular expressions. This is just what I'm focusing on right now. And again, dash, it might exist there. You could also put braces followed by a question mark, and then it would uh, f search for it, but it wouldn't say it was not true if it didn't find those things. I'm actually going to show you how to do that in this exact little thing here. So again, it's going to be digits between 0 and 9, followed by 4 of those said digits. And then I'm going to close off that because that's going to grab me one type of telephone number. But, like I said before, if I wanted to be able to grab telephone numbers that might have these braces in them, I want to be able to do that. So let's use the OR symbol, followed by another brace. And then I'm going to put this brace inside of here but I'm gonna to have to escape it, so I gotta backslash it, but that might not show up, so I wanna use the question mark. Brace 0-9, again, I'm gonna be looking for three of those digits to be found there, and then after that, there may be the brace, so I'm gonna escape it, put the brace in there, and then put the question mark in there saying that it is that does not need to be there, but if it is there, that's perfectly fine. Then I'm going to define that I'm going to be looking for three digits again, and then potentially a dash, and then 
digits from 0 to 9. That should be four numbers in a row. And then I want to put a bracket around there. So I'm looking either for a phone number that meets these, this distinction right here, or that's what that or is there for, or I'm looking for a telephone number that is going to match this pattern right here. And I'm going to come down here and type in find all, and I'm going to iterate through and print everything to screen if it is found. It searched through every one of those, these telephone numbers that are actually near here at the end of the line. So it was able to find all these different types of telephone numbers. There's three of them there. And it was able to locate all three of those telephone numbers and put them in there. So there are a bunch of different ways you can use regular expressions inside of Python. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.